So next, I think it would be a good idea if uh, we created an actual game level for the character to run around in. So to do that, we'll need a tile set and we'll need to set up some physics collisions to those tiles. So in the game level scene, let's right click on game level, add a child node. I'm going to look for a tile map. So add that. And then the tile map is going to need tiles. So to get tiles, let's go to the art pack, go down to tile sets. And then we can use some of the tiles here. So let's start with uh, tile set grass. I'll just drag that in here. So our tile map, so our tile map is going to need a tile set in order to have tiles to draw onto the tile map. So let's create a tile set in the top right in the inspector with tile map selected. So go to tile set empty, do drop down new tile set. And then for this, we're going to left click and do it. Now we have this window for tiles. So if you go into Art Gatherer's exterior tile sets, uh, we can come down here and bring in some tiles. So I'll start with tile set grass, drag and drop that here. And we can automatically create tiles in the Atlas uh, from this uh, tile set image. So we'll hit yes. And you can see that it separates all of the tiles to 16 by 16 tiles, which is what we expect for this. So to draw with these tiles, we want to click on tile map at the bottom, click on the tile you want, use the paint tool and then start drawing onto the tile map. So you can just kind of draw and the tiles will go into their space. Uh, you can see in the tile map on the far right, the tile size here is set up 16 by 16. So you want to have this set to whatever size tiles you're drawing so that they uh, line up in the level correctly. Now, uh, right now, these tiles don't have any collision added to them. Let's start by using this rectangle fill tool, and I'm going to fill in the screen tile something like this. And then let's draw the edge tiles as well. So I'll use this one in line mode to go from here all the way up to here. The other side on the right up to here. This one at the bottom from here to here. And then these edge tiles, something like that. And then at the top, we'll have this corner. We'll use this one to go the middle section and then the top right hand corner. OK, so then we kind of have our little island tile set up. Uh, now to add physics collisions to this tile map in the tile map inspector, you go to physics layers, add a new physics layer. And in this physics layer, we can see the collision layer, which is where the collisions are going to exist when we set them up inside of this uh, tile set editor. So basically anything checking for collisions on layer one can be blocked by these tiles. So go to tile set now, and we want to paint a property of the physics layer zero. So when we add in the collisions, we're adding it by adding a collision shape on physics layer zero. So let's start with these uh, bottom tiles here. I'll left click on them. So by default, it's going to just create a box around the full shape size, but uh, you can click on the corners and pull them up like this. If you don't want the collision shape to actually be the full tile size which in this case uh, makes sense because these tiles are only half tiles and then you have um, theoretically the water beneath it. So I'll make it something like uh, this right here. And then uh, to take this same, and then to take the same collision shape and copy it over to these tiles, just left click on them and then left click here. And then we'll just keep taking the template you just created and applying it elsewhere. So now if I was to hit control S and hit play, we can walk down here to the ground here, and uh, these tiles are actually going to block our character's movement. Now, everything else does not, as you can see. And also, our tile map needs to be uh, definitely behind the player in terms of sorting. So to make sure it sorts on bottom, you can uh, click on tile map, go to ordering, and uh, make the Z index something like negative 50. OK, now everything else in the scene shows on top of the tile map, so that, that's more correct. So now for the rest of these edges, you could either create a razor thin uh, physics collision where we have these black edges, or you could consider um, just adding water tiles and then the water tiles have a physics collision. But then if uh, that would be the case, or you could consider adding water tiles, which would be unwalkable, uh, but that could cause a problem too, because if you have something like a bridge or a boat, then those could be affected by the physics collision as well. So the next thing we're going to want to do here is to add in probably the water tile set. So really in this pack, that's just one single tile. So let's go into tile sets and look for tile set water, and then we can drag and drop it into this tiles area. 
Oh, actually, you do that on the tile set tab. So drag it into tiles, but in tile set, automatically create the tiles. Then let's select this tile and we will give it the collision shape. So uh, you can hit F to do the default collision shape and then left click on the tile to uh, make sure that it gets added in. So without tile map, we'll also create a separate layer for the water tiles to sit on. Uh, one reason for doing that is that ground tiles like this one might not uh, have the entire tile filled in. So you would want to have some water under it in the background. And that would be possible if you use multiple layers. So let's call the first layer layer ground. That's what we already drew on. And then add an element and we'll call this one water. So to draw on the water layer, click on this drop down menu, go to water. And now you'll see that all of the ground tiles uh, kind of fade into the background, uh, meaning that those exist on a different layer than the one we're working on right now. Now, I also want to take any water tiles and have them behind our ground since those would sit like since those are sitting under it. So for the Z index on the water layer, I'm going to set that to negative 50 so that it's uh, automatically below everything else here. So then I'm going to select the water tile. So in this case, I don't want to put water under anywhere where there is ground because that will end up causing collisions, even though the ground tile doesn't have collision, the water tile does. So in this setup, I'm just going to be careful to go around the land and not draw inside of it. So let's click here for a, a rect shape and then let's drag in some water tiles. So just draw in the shape. Then we can also go up here, draw in the shape and really you can make it as big as you need to. So if you want to have a large tile map, just feel free to drag in a whole bunch of tiles. Okay, let's also create another area over here for a, another island that our character will eventually be able to walk over to. So I'm going to delete and cut out some water tiles, just whatever I want the shape of the island to be to make it um, something like that. Sure. And now let's switch over to the ground tile and click on tile set grass. So we'll start by filling in this whole area with the grass tile. So use the Vect tool and make sure you turn off the eraser. So let's drag in the grass over here, 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 and here. Now we just need to fill in the correct tiles that surround that. So down here should be this one. Then we can drag like this, put that there. And here, 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 just kind of filling in the edge tiles. So let's do that. that. Okay, now we need the left side. So we'll fill in this. And if you wanted to, it's possible in Godot to create auto tile rules. I don't think I'm going to be covering that in this video, just for simplicity's sake. So we're just kind of going around the border and doing this manually for right now. So lastly, we do need to add water tiles here. And I guess that's already there. But let's go to water and then draw in water tiles at this bottom line. And uh, that should pretty much be good for right now. So let's go ahead and hit play and make sure that it is working with the collisions. So we come over here and the water blocks us as well as the bottom of this ground down here. So next we need to figure out how we're going to build a bridge between these two areas. So let's open up the tile set again. And I'm going to drag in this tile set floating bridge to this area and we'll automatically create tiles for that. Now these tiles are going to go on a top layer. So I'm going to once again go to the tile map add an element and we'll call this uh, top layer. Let's leave the Z index at zero and I'll take the ground and make it negative five for right now. Okay, and then let's uh, use the tiles here to put a bridge across the water. So let's switch to the top layer, use the pencil tool or the paint tool, click on the tile we want, put it down and then add in the bridge area and the final piece over there. Now, right now, even though visually it looks like we'd be able to just walk across this bridge uh, the reality is that the water under it is causing a collision to occur. So we wouldn't actually be able to walk across it. Now, there's probably a good handful of solutions to this. But um, in this case, I'm going to do the simplest one possible, which is just going to be that we'll have a separate water layer where whenever we put a bridge in our game, we'll just make the water under it not have a collision shape since we don't need the water for anything else really other than visuals and causing collisions. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go to water. I'm going to right click on the base tile and create an alternative tile. On this alternative tile, we're going to have no collision shape. So we just use this alternative tile in uh, tile map paint mode. And then we're going to add these no collision tiles on the water layer. So just like this, making sure that all of those tiles have no collision. So now we should be able to hit play and actually walk across the bridge. So let's go over here and we can walk this way. You can see that now the water is allowing us to cross. Really, the bridge itself doesn't do anything other than a visual. 
It's just the lack of a collision shape that's allowing us to cross the bridge. Okay, so now we can hit play and test this out. So we'll walk over here. The water in all other places still blocks us. But if we go to this area with the alternative water tiles and the bridge, we can walk right across it. So now uh, we can access the second island, which is pretty cool.